Hello, and welcome to Building with Mr. Scott. Today, we're going to build a birdhouse. Now, this birdhouse is easy to build, and it's a simple design. It's going to take a little help probably from your parents because there is some sawing and other types of tool work involved. But I know that working together with your family, you'll be able to make a wonderful birdhouse that your fine feathered friends outside will enjoy. Now, which feathered friends, you ask? Well, this birdhouse is special in that it's built for our smaller birds. Now, in here in the Pacific Northwest, we have some smaller birds like the nuthatch and the wren and the chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. I bet you've heard that sound in your backyard. In fact, I bet if you went outside right now, you could probably hear it. Well, guess what? That chickadee dee dee will be extra happy to have a nice home to live in. Now, this birdhouse is made of wood. Well, what kind of wood? I'm glad you asked. It's made of cedar. Now, cedar's a great wood for birdhouses because cedar is naturally insect repellent and it weathers so well. So your bird moving in won't have bugs to contend with. He won't need an exterminator and He'll be able to live in there dry and safe. Now, where am I going to get this cedar, Mr. Scott? Well, I'm glad you asked that question too. I bet if you go outside and take a look at your neighbor's fence, it's probably made of cedar. So just snap off a few boards and bring them back in the garage. No? No fence of cedar? Okay. Well, how about you stop by the school and pick up your very own pieces of cedar? You see, at the school right now, we're replacing our little white picket fence with a fence made out of cedar. So I'm going to have lots of extra boards and we're going to need something to do with them. And by golly, our little birds are going to love it when we make them some birdhouses. Now, these boards are going to be available to you and your family to come by the school and pick up along with some nails and instructions on how to build the house. So let's get started. Some first things that we're going to need to think about when we build our birdhouse is safety. Anytime you're doing a project, safety is the utmost importance. So I am always going to wear my safety glasses. Anytime I'm using tools or uh, working with projects that could injure me. The reason is I'd love to see the finished product. And with these safety glasses, I'm assured of being able to do that. So safety first, always wear your safety glasses when you're doing your work. The other thing we're gonna need is a few different kinds of tools. First of all, we said the birdhouse was made of wood, so we're going to need some wood. Now, I will be supplying you with three, two or three pieces about this size, plenty enough to get you the right pieces for your birdhouse. We're also gonna need instructions. Well, you'll have those too in your little birdhouse kit. And you're gonna need some nails. Now, I'm using one and a quarter inch nails, uh, and these are really, excuse me, one and a half inch nails. And now these are really a little too big for this project, but it's what I had on hand. When you pick up your birdhouse kit, you're gonna have the right nail for the right job. Now, why is this nail <coughs> a little too big? Because our wood is really only about five eighths inches thick, which is about a half an inch. Now this is going to stick out because we have a one and a half inch nail, not a nine inch nail, while nine inch nails are good, it's not right for this job. The one and a half inch nail is gonna be a little bit long. It's gonna just, it just requires a little more work to work with. So you'll probably have a one inch nail and that will be just sufficient for what we need. You're also going to need some tools. Tool, also good. Hammer, great tool. We are gonna need this quite a bit. We're going to need a drill. Now, power tools and really all tools should be handled with the utmost respect. So when you go to use the power tools, Make sure you check with mom or dad so that you can have some safety help and some guidance if you need it. We're going to need a drill. We're also going to need a drill bit. Now I'm using a one and a quarter inch drill bit because per the website nestwatch.org, that's the website I've used to grab some plans and some data and information about the birdhouses. They say that a one and a quarter inch drill bit is a great size for our smaller birds. Now it may not attract the exact bird you want, but I promise using this size, you'll be able to have a welcoming home for any of our small birds here in the Pacific Northwest. What else will we need? We're going to need a tape measure. Well, because, or something to measure with, preferably a tape measure or a larger ruler if you have one. 
The reason is, is that we're going to need to measure out the cuts of wood in order to build the birdhouse. I can't just bend some planks and make this magic. I wish I could, and I bet you do too, but after, after you do this, you will be able to work magic with the tools that you have been practicing. Um, what else do we need to make this happen? Well, by golly, we need some instructions. We need some plans. And the plans tell us exactly how much wood that we need and exactly how to measure it and cut it the right way. So let's take a look at our plans. Okay, now that you've seen the plans and you know what to do with your measurements, let's get measuring. I have here a much larger piece of wood than you will see, but it's because I was able to grab this extra one that I've had. So I'm going to do some measuring and we're gonna get cutting. But first, we need to make sure that we get our measurements just right. Now, good builders always say, measure twice, cut once. Why do you think that is? Because if I were to cut this board with the wrong measurements, now I've wasted part of my wood and I may or may not have enough to finish the project. So always measure twice, cut once. It's gonna be a hard lesson to learn. Take it from my experience. I've gone through quite a bit of wood. But I know that we're gonna be successful now. So we're going to need to measure out our pieces. Now, let's go ahead and get started. The plans call for a front piece of wood. Now this front is eight inches from top to bottom. Now all of our pieces are gonna be the same width because our boards are exactly five and a half inches across. Eight inches tall for the front by five and a half. We'll talk about the whole later on. That's our front piece. Let's get it measured. Now I always use something to mark with and I'm using a Sharpie today. I typically like to work with pencils because the measure twice cut once rule means you can erase and if you, if you measure incorrectly. But I'm fairly sure that I'm gonna get it right this time because this is my fourth one to build and I've got a lot of practice now. But uh, we're going to use a Sharpie today mostly so that you can see the measurements on the wood. So let's take a look. Our measurements call for an eight inch front piece. This is our front piece and it's eight inches from top to bottom. So I'm going to measure, whoops, I'm going to measure eight inches and we're gonna mark it on our board. So eight inches and I always like to write which piece it is. Now you can see that I've done it on this one and I put this side out for illustration purposes but when you go to build it, you might wanna make sure that your markings are on the inside of the house. I promise you, your birds won't mind the artwork and it'll look much nicer on the outside. So we're gonna go eight inches from the top and we're gonna write front on this piece. And you can see, I wrote front on this piece and here's my mark, eight inches from the top. Now I'm gonna make a straight line across so that way I know where to cut it. Mm -hmm and your board should look like this. Let's measure out the rest. Welcome to the saw. Now again, a saw is a very helpful tool and it saves a lot of arm work versus having to do it manually. However, it can be a very dangerous tool and it can injure you very seriously. So please, please remember safety first. Now I've got my board here and you can see that I've marked out the individual pieces. Now again, yours may look a little different because your piece just won't be as big overall, but you'll have the same markings on your littler pieces of wood, okay? So, let's get cutting. Now, whenever I use my saw, they can kick up quite a bit of dust. So I tend to use a shop vac. And this saw just happens to have a perfect little spot for the hose to plug into, and it'll suck all of the dust right up in there. You may see a little bit of dust, but it manages to take care of most of it so that you're not breathing all that stuff in. All right, let's go ahead and get cutting. It does have a protective guide, but if I was to be super dangerous, it could lose 
use a thumb or some fingers, and that'd be no good. So, making sure that my hands are safe distance from the blade, and I will go ahead and Okay, we've cut our wood. I have two sides, one front, one back, one floor, and one roof. That's six cuts of wood, and you should have the same amount. Let's head back over to the workbench.